What's up guys, this is Yao here and you're welcome to the second episode of our Learn Akan Idiom series. So in our first episode last week, we looked at nine chi idioms. Nine, okay? And today I want us to continue with five chi idioms, okay? To add up to last week's. And just as we did last week, for each idiom that we provide, we are going to give the meanings of its constituent words. All right, so the words that come together to form that particular idiom, we are going to give the meanings of all of them. And we also give the literal meaning of the idiom overall, as well as its figurative meaning, okay? The actual meaning. And then we end with three usage examples, just as we did last week, okay? And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that. And I'll be right back. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start. And I have my idioms here. And we start with Jane Twa. Jane Twa. Jane. Twa. Jane. Twa. And I'm saying this as a command. So I'm saying it in sort of the imperative form. So the tone will seem quite different from if I were to use it in a sentence that isn't a command. Okay. So I have Jane. Twa. Jane. Twa. Jane. Twa. So we have Jane, and Jane means to run, okay, to run, to run away, to bolt, okay, so we have Jane, to run, and then Twa, Twa means to, to go after, okay, so like after, to go after. So I could say um, Watuano, okay, Watuano, and Watuano would mean he or she has gone after him or her, okay, Watuano. So we have Jane to run, and then we have Twa after. So to run after. Okay, and this would be the literal meaning of this expression to run after. Okay, to run after. But as an idiom, so figuratively, this means to seek help from. Okay, to seek help from or to appeal to. Okay, to seek help from or to appeal to. So if we say, for example, Wejane atwa no. Wejane atwa no. Wejane atwa no. While literally, this would mean he or she has run after him or her. Figuratively, this would mean he or she has sought help from him or her. Okay, or he or she has appealed to him or her. Okay, so this is the intended meaning. All right, so let's look at some usage examples here. And we have Erade Mijane Twao. Erade Mijane Twao. Erade. Mijane twao. Okay? Erade. Mijane twao. And then for the second one, we have Ama jane twa niknu dadano. Okay? Ama jane twa niknu dadano. Ama jane twa niknu dadano. Ama jane twa nekunu dadano. And then for the last one, we have Abena jane twa akusia. Abena jane twa akusia. Abena jane twa akusia. Abena jane twa akusia. Okay, so for the second idiom, we have 
nani etutu ato nensem nani etutu ato nensem nani etutu ato nensem okay nani etutu ato nensem so if you took um last week's lesson so the first episode of the series you know nani means his or her eyes okay his or her eyes so we have the n apostrophe or the n apostrophe and that is his or her and then we have any being the eye or the eyes okay and for et to the verb here is to okay to and to means to uproot okay to uproot so i can say for example to bancheno to bancheno uproot the cassava okay to bancheno but it's not just with that okay to is to just take out something from its place so when something is in something and then you are taking it off okay then we say to so for instance in this context we have nani which is the eye and the eyeball is in its socket right so if you should take out the eye from its socket like that you take it out we say what to okay what to so the verb here is to and it has been reduplicated it has been doubled that is why you see to to okay and for most three verbs when you do this doubling when you do this reduplication you end up with a form that applies to that action happening not just once but like several times okay two or more so when you see to to here it means it's not just one eye one eyeball that fell off okay or got plucked out but at least two okay so we have et to to mean has or have fallen off not just one have fallen off okay or have been plucked out <laughs> okay so nani et to his or her eyes have fallen off or have been plucked out and then we have to and again if you took last week's lesson you know to means to settle to settle to fall off okay to a ground so if you remember when i did that yes so at to fem okay so to means to fall or to settle so at to have fallen off or have settled right and then we have ne and ne here is your possessive adjective his or her which means whatever is coming next so the word that comes next will refer to something that is possessed by whomever the ne is referring to okay so the next word is insem 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 okay and for insem insa is the hand okay insa the hand so your body parts insa is the hand and then we have the m mm at the end which is from mu mu and mu is in or inside okay so it's not just the hand it's the inside of the hand the inside of the hand and how do you call that yeah the palm okay so in all nani etutu ato ninsem would literally mean his or her eyes have fallen off and settled in his or her palms okay so his or her eyes have you know fallen off into his or her palms so that's your literal meaning but figuratively nani etutu ato ninsem means he or she is shocked okay he or she is so shocked or agitated okay over something right 
So I don't know if you've ever been a fan of cartoons, right? So those toys, <laughs> yeah. So there used to be this cartoon series called The Mask. I think they had a movie for it as well, yeah. So it was called The Mask and I'm sure some of you will know it. <laughs> so there was this guy who would put on a mysterious mask and then he turns around and then he becomes whatever he wants. <laughs> okay. And this particular character, actually this applied to almost all cartoon characters, but particularly for this character, when he got shocked, his eyeballs will fall off. You know, it will fall to a distance and then it will roll back. You know, because when it falls off, there's some sort of springs <laughs> to each of them. So it falls and then the spring will pull it back. <laughs> okay. So I guess you can think of this when you think of this idiom, right? He is so shocked, his eyeballs will fall off and then return, right? So for this idiom, neni etutu ato nesem his or her eyeballs have fallen off and settled in his or her palms, okay? Meaning he or she is shocked, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some usage examples. And for the first one, we have many etutu ato means them. Many etitu ato means them. Many etitu ato means them. Many etitu ato means them. And then for the second one, we have Kofi any etitu ato means them. Kofi any etitu ato. Nainsem Kofi any etitu ato Nainsem. Okay, Kofi any etitu ato Nainsem. And for the last example, we have Okunafuono any etitu ato Nainsem. Okunafuono any etitu ato Nainsem. Okunafuono any etutu ato ninsem. Now, on to the next idiom, and we have Nensa Hano. Nensa Hano. Nensa Hano. Nensa Hano. Okay, so again we have ne, and ne is your possessive adjective, his or her. Okay, then we have nsa, so it means nsa, whatever it is, is possessed by whomever ne is referring to. Okay, so we have nsa, and nsa is the hand. Okay, so ne nsa, his or her hand. And then we have ha, and ha is a verb meaning to worry. Okay, to worry or to disturb. So like to disturb someone. Okay. And then we have the object pronoun no. And no is him or her. So the object pronoun him or her. So in all, literally what we have here is his or her hand worries him or her. Okay, so his hand, his own hand worries him or her own hand worries her. <laughs> all right. And this is your literal meaning, but figuratively, this means he or she is a thief. Okay, he or she is a thief. All right, so let's look at some usage examples. And we have wonsa how. Wonsa how. Wonsa how. Okay. Wonsa how. Now for the next one we have Niknu Nsa Hano. Niknu Nsa Hano. Niknu Nsa Hano. Niknu Nsa Hano. 
And then for the last example, we have Wonsa Hawong. Wonsa Hawong. Wonsa Hawong. Okay. Wonsa Hawong. Okay, let's move to the next idiom. And we have Wada ne benkum so. Wada ne benkum so. Wada ne benkum so. Okay. Wada ne benkum so. So we have wada, which is he or she has slept. Okay. He or she has slept. So da is to sleep. Right. The verb da to sleep. And then we have the wo that begins this. And last week I said this wo is the third person subject pronoun he or she when it is used with a verb in its perfect aspect, you know, form. Okay. So he or she, and then the a between the w and da is your perfect aspect marker which translates roughly as has or have to express a complete action so we did this last week so wada means he or she has slept wada wada and then we have ne which again is your possessive adjective his or her okay which means whatever is coming next refers to something that is possessed by whomever this ne refers to okay so what is coming next is benkumso okay benkumso and benkumso means the left side okay the left side benkumso so ne benkumso is his or her left side okay so together this expression we have wada ne benkumso he or she has slept on his or her left side okay so this is your literal meaning but figuratively this expression means he or she has died right he or she has died and that is wada ne benkumso wada ne benkumso okay wada ne benkumso so for usage examples we have kweku ada ne benkumso kweku ada ne benkumso okay kweku ada ne benkumso kweku has died or passed away okay yeah as an idiom in english <laughs> Kweku ada ne benkumso. Kweku ada ne benkumso. And then we have ne mame ada ne benkumso. Ne mame ada ne benkumso. Ne mame ada ne benkumso. And for the last usage example, we have ne papa ada ne benkumso ne papa ada ne benkumso okay ne papa ada ne benkumso okay so let's look at the last idiom for this episode okay and for this we have odo benada odo benada odo Benada. Okay. Odo Benada. So we have Odo. And this Odo is not love. <laughs> no, this is not love. So for Odo, we have O from Ono. Okay, which is he or she, the subject pronoun. And then we have Do. And Do can mean to love, right? To love. But in this expression, that is not what you're looking at. This do means to read, okay, to read. So, odo is he or she reads, okay, he or she reads, odo. And then we have binada, 
from a binada. Okay, so binada, the full word is a binada. Okay, and a binada or binada is the chi name for Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesday is a binada or binada. So in all, literally, we have he or she weeds on Tuesday, right? He or she weeds on Tuesday or Tuesdays, okay? He or she weeds on Tuesdays. But just like um, a buying a genie tool from last week, you know, that idiom, a buying a genie tool, this idiom applies only to men. Okay, not women. So this applies only to men. So instead of he or she weeds on Tuesdays, we can say he weeds on Tuesdays. Okay, he weeds on Tuesdays. And this would be the literal meaning. Okay, but figuratively, just like a buying a genitu from last week, this idiom means that he is impotent. Okay, he is impotent. So when a man is impotent for some reason, we seem to think that he waits on Tuesdays. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the usage examples. And we have Nekunu do Benada. Nekunu do Benada. Nekunu do Benada. Her husband weeds on Tuesdays, <laughs> okay, it's important. So, Nikunu do Benada. And then for the second example, we have Menno Benada. Menno Benada. Menno Benada, okay, Menno Benada. And then for the last example, we have Asumadu Yere say or do benada. Asume do yere say or do benada. Asume do yere say or do benada. A here see, right? Asume do yere say or do benada. Asume do yere say or do benada. So, this is where we end the second episode of the series. I hope you found this useful. And as always, if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week.